Hello everybody, this is Danny from Deep South Homestead on porch time today. Yes, I'm in the shop. Uh, the wind is blowing like uh, 15 to 20 miles an hour outside. I uh, checked out the cabin, thought about maybe doing some video over there, but it's just not going to happen. It's just too windy. Uh, it's too windy to go out in the field and do anything, even though there's things that I need to be doing out there. So I took this opportunity to come into the shop. and. I'm working on a project here in the shop uh, for the cabin. You kind of call it, uh, I guess you'll say it'd be a little sneak peek. Uh, maybe Ms. Wanda won't get too upset if I uh, take y'all along on some of my journey on what I'm doing right here. But guys, uh, we're so busy here at Deep South Homestead right now. The, uh, the gardens are all coming in. Uh, Everything, uh, firewoods, we've got lots of firewood. If y'all watch our uh, previous videos, you'll see we have lots of firewood uh, that we're trying to get processed, trying to get it put up. We're working on the cabin at the same time. You know, we have gardens, animals, uh, canning, all this kind of stuff is going on. And we're just trying to survive. I mean, the good, you know, a lot of people say, well, man, I'll be glad when this shelter in place is over. Well, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, Wanda and I don't know any difference. Uh, we don't go anywhere anyway. We spend probably 90% of our time just right here at the house. And if we do go to town, it's usually just to mail Etsy orders at a post office or run by a hardware store and pick up some more stuff that we need to finish a project here at the, at the uh, farm. Or maybe a friend of ours owns a little feed store right here in the country. We drop by, pick up a few bags of fertilizer or something like that. Maybe a bag of feed for the chickens or something, to kind of help get us along through because you know they we can't let them free range all the time. I mean sometimes they have to stay in the pen. But other than that, you know we're pretty much nothing changes for us. I mean I went through this same thing when Katrina happened. Uh, I really the only things I knew that was really different was I didn't have any electricity for 26 days and. All my trees were blew down everywhere. I mean, you know, the whole place was just, all the timber was blowed down. Other than that, I still went to work every day. I never missed a day's work. Uh, I, I never had to sit in a gas line. I never had to do without food and any of that kind of stuff because we were prepared here. And we just eat out of the freezers. I have generators, everything was kept going. You know, we had to sleep outside because the house was too hot. The house I live in is not designed to not be cooled. That's one of the reasons why we took this opportunity to build the off-grid cabin so that we could design it so that if something like this ever happens again, we can just stay at the cabin if it, you know, if it doesn't get tore up or something. And then, of course, we always have the cellar. We can go underground if we need to, and it's kind of cool down there. Uh, in the heat of the day we could do that. But the cabin is strictly for uh, for an off-grid situation so we could function, we could still cook, we could still eat, we could still sleep. Uh, it's designed to deal with the heat and, and that's one thing that we, we appreciate about being able to do this one project there. And part of the project I'm working on here today is for the cabin. It's for the bathroom as a matter of fact. It's a vanity top for the bathroom you know, I could have went and bought one, and it would have been a lot cheaper, probably. And but it would have been no cheaper; it would have been faster. Let's put it that way. But the cabin is all about personal touches, you know. And and this countertop that I'm actually building here is uh, is made out of poplar. It's made out of the heart of a poplar tree. Uh, because there's particular colors that we were looking for in the bathroom vanity top. We want it to be custom. We want it to be something that we want. But what I'm doing with this vanity top is I'm actually adding something to it that even though it's poplar, it, it, it changes its appearance. That's the thing about stain, because it's a stain that I'm going to be putting on it, is that even though it's poplar, I can change what it appears to be. I can take pine 
and I can make pine look like oak, or I can take pine and make it look like walnut, or I can take spruce and do the same thing. I make it look like anything other. I make it look like golden oak. That's the thing about stain, is that when you stain something, it changes its appearance. And guys, our lives are the same way. When we're stained with the world, it's very difficult sometimes for people to know that uh, that we belong to the to the Lord because our lives become stained with the things of this world and when people see us if we're not careful that's what they see is what the stain of the world has left on us as an individual and just like this wood right here even though I will stain it and I will change its appearance it will enhance it and it will bring out things in it that are hidden that you don't know are there same way when the world stains our lives. Uh, it brings out things in us that we don't know is there. Like for instance, if you are a, if you go out and you start drinking and you get lightheaded, uh, there's lots of different types of drunks. You know, I've been around lots of them in my life. Uh, some of them are happy drunks. Some of them are sloppy drunks. Some of them are angry drunks. Some of them are vicious, you know. Uh, Want to fight all the time. Uh, so, it, the alcohol brings out a side in you that is hidden, that otherwise would stay reserved and in the background, it would never come out, but the alcohol loosens the mind up and we begin to think that we're something different, you know, and, and that's the way this stain will do. This stain will enhance this wood. It will bring out things in this wood that if you just look at it with your normal eye, you don't really see it. But when you put a particular stain on it, this is something I've learned over the years of doing construction work, was that by using a, now this is this was totally off the wall with me. I learned this doing a, a house for a gentleman, uh, using poplar and magnolia as trim in his house. I used stain on the poplar. I used a cherry stain. Now cherry's a red stain. I used a red stain on a green and a black and a purple on a blue colored poplar wood and boy did it make it pop you know it it brought out the true colors of the poplar things that your naked eye wouldn't see and that's the way the world is with us when the world stains us it brings out things in our lives that uh, we don't know are there many times and that's one thing I've noticed with this uh, with the viral infection that we have going around our country right now. And guys, a lot of people are making light of this. This is real. Uh, this is this is real. Uh, in my opinion, it's a terrorist attack on this country. I'll be honest with you. It's a, it's a terrorist attack from China. Uh, I think that they quietly done a terror attack on our country. And they did it in a way that it actually affected the whole world. But I think they were targeting us as, an, as a country. You know, we've got the issue of, it's called COVID-19, and a lot of y'all have jumped my case about a lot of things, saying, oh, well, COVID, you know, COVID stands for Corona, C-O-R-V-I-D, you know, or C-O-V-I-D, Corona, virus, it was, it was discovered in 2019, and all this kind of stuff, and I get all that, I get it. But, you know, I have my own acrostic for COVID-19, you know. Uh, to me, COVID stands for, if you do the acrostic on it, for me personally, I think it stands for the Certificate of Vaccination. That's what COVID, C-O-V, Certificate of Vaccination. I believe that's what it's eventually going to end up being. Because if you go over on my Patreon channel and you watch the video I've done about, uh, about the 666 over there and the patenting of it and stuff like that, I think you'll begin to understand what I'm talking about because COVID-19 was never really about the virus. It was, the virus was a, or is, a means of travel, or it's a means of a way to get something done. They're looking for a way to track us as people here in the United States. They're looking at, like, kind of like China does the facial recognition and stuff all over their country. They can just see, a, they can be a thousand people on the street, and 5G can, can pinpoint every one of them, and AI can... Do facial recognition, pick them every one up. He knows who they are, knows everything about them, down to what size underwear they wear, you know. I mean, it can do all that stuff. 
And here in the United States, they were looking for the same way to do it here. And by locking everyone in their homes like they did, and telling everybody you can't go to work and all this kind of stuff, well, people spent more time on the Internet. <laughs> go figure. And that's the one place they can monitor and know what you're doing and how you're doing it. And what your likes are, what your dislikes are. They just simply look at what you were on the Internet doing. That's why during this whole time, I, I've done things on the internet I normally wouldn't do. I went to sites I normally wouldn't go to. I've done things I just normally would not do. Just so that if they were tracking me, that they would get a false response from who I am and what I like and what I don't like. I just did it on purpose. You know, because it's just, that's who I am. But we have to understand that the coronavirus was just a means of being able to, I, I believe personally, to get a way to put a tracking device in our bodies because I do believe that the vaccine is coming. I do believe that one day it will be mandatory. Uh, just like I talk over on Patreon, nothing will ever be the same again after this. And you go, oh yeah, I want everything to get back to like it was. Well, you can forget that ever happening. It's not going to happen. It's not possible for it to happen because if you go back and look, uh, after 9-11, Nothing ever went back to the way it was. Uh, after the Civil War, nothing ever went back to the way it was. I mean, just go back after the assassination of Lincoln, nothing ever went back to the way it was. After the assassination of Kennedy, nothing ever went back to the way it was. Everything changes. You go to try to get in an airport now and get on a plane and see if you don't go through a, a wand to be detected. You, it won't happen because things have changed. It's going to be the same thing after this uh, COVID-19 uh, I do believe at some point they'll implement a vaccination and without that vaccination you will not be able to, uh, you won't be able to hold a job, you won't be able to get a driver's license, you won't be able to go to college, you won't be able to go buy food, you won't be able to have a checking account like I talk on Patreon. There's lots of things you won't be able to do if you don't take that vaccination and when they give you that vaccination it's going to be loaded with nanoparticles in it. Those nanoparticles will attach to your DNA. The DNA will then be able to tell the, uh, the, the server that, or the sensor that's going to be given with you, there's a sensor it will be able to pick up what's going on inside your body and at that point it will be able to do the things I talk about on Patreon. It will be able to do all those things. I'm not going to give Patreon away but I talk about all this over on Patreon. And you will be, literally you will become a homing device just much like in the military when we put them out ahead of the military excursions when we would go in uh, special forces, uh, the teams of us would go in and we put those things out uh, in specific places so that once the military goes in, the planes come over and flies a sortie, uh, they can pick up the homing device, they automatically know what places need to be bombed because the homing devices have already been planted in place. Well, this uh, nanoparticles that will be put in people's bodies and attached to their DNA will be much the same way. You will be able to be tracked uh, you will be able to be turned on and turned off basically if you want to use those uh, phrases. Uh, you will be able to uh, uh, to know your thoughts. All these kind of things will be able to, they'll be able to figure your DNA out and they'll be able to, they'll use the, the, the claim that oh, we can stop someone from doing something harmful before they do it because we'll know their intent before they do it. And they're going to try to play it as something, uh, as something good rather than the evil that it really is. Uh, but I'm going to get on over here, guys. i got to get this staining done. And I'm going to turn around and let you watch me as I stain it. Uh, I think you'll enjoy that uh, rather than just seeing me just sitting here. <laughs> Plus, I need to get this done. So I'm going to flip the camera around here right quick and get everything set up. And we're going to stain a, a top and let you see a little bit about what I'm talking about. Okay, we've got our cherry stain here, and uh, we're going to be taking a cotton rag here. Uh, make sure there ain't no trash on this. I think we're all good to go. I cleaned it just a minute ago. We've got our cherry stain opened, and we're going to be taking a rag here. We're going to dip it in this cherry stain, and we're going to begin to, uh, to rub it on here. Just a little bit at a time like this. I think you'll begin to see what I'm talking about as I go along here. 
Look how that's already. See the changes in that? It's already making. This, uh, I got the doors open here because this stuff's pretty strong. So you may hear some different noises and stuff. Don't think anything about it. We're trying to get this thing actively done here. Look at that cherry just makes this. And this is a red stain cherry. You would think that... Uh, that because it's a red stain it would turn it red but I want you to look at I know the lights got a pretty good glare on it there but um, that's a LED light for you we're gonna go around the edges of the bottom here come up this back on the back back here get a good coat on it now I'll probably put more than one coat you can see the difference right here where it starts changing colors and right over here Oh. See if you can you can tell where I start and stop at there. Look at that. How quickly it stain can can change something. Well it makes all the difference in the world. It brings out colors in it that that you don't even know is there. Amazing. How a red stain can go on something and make it look like that. Look at that. Look at the, the differences right here. See how dark that turns? See if we can get a little more here. That's how stain influences stuff. As much as it changes something, as much as it can make something bad, it can also make something extremely beautiful. Let's see if we can't get some more in here. Look at that, guys. See the difference that it's making? You know, porch time is usually just about you know, sitting here talking about some specific thing. But sometimes we overlook the beauty in things and we have to figure out how to make them beautiful. I mean, look at the difference in this space that I haven't done right here and this back here. And this is just stain. This is not, this is not any kind of clear over it yet or anything to that nature. This is just purely stain. just beautiful Get along the front edge out here if you notice as I'm staining this I'm not even wiping it off I'm just constantly wiping it now don't you look at that I'm gonna see if I can get this to, to maybe pick up here and get look at this right here see the colors in this see the beauty in it now I've got to flip it up here. I've got to be able to get to this back back here to do the backsplash. Look at that. Look how quickly the difference in the backsplash makes. This is what stain does to things. This is what stain will do to your life. You can have a pure, clean life and stain will turn it dark just like this. A beautiful, clean life that you worked hard your whole life to have a good reputation, a good name. You can do one thing and stain it and it's forever like this it's different that's the thing about changing things now I'm going to actually do this one more time I'm going to go over it one more time because that soaked right up in there 
I want the color of this to be even more enhanced and even darker than it was. And I want you to understand that if you keep dabbling in something, staining your life, your life, just like this, will become even darker. And your life will become even more tainted than what it originally was. And it'll be stained forever. That's why many times the Lord will actually intercede in someone's life and stop them before they actually do too much damage in their life to a point where it's unrepairable and they've destroyed their life forever. Much like stain will do. Look at that. Guys, see, even, I'm going to see if I can get here, but well, no, it's not blocking the light. I'm trying to figure out how to block this light where you can actually see it better. I'm trying to get back, i got to put another coat on the backsplash. See if I can't I'll put enough on there this time to do some good. And you've noticed I haven't wiped off any of the stain yet. I'm just leaving it all on there to soak in and to soak in really good. Look at that. I'm gonna take in a minute, I'm gonna get up closer and I'm gonna give you a really give you a bird's eye view on it here. Just to let you see. what it's all about, what it really looks like. I think that you'll enjoy it. Okay. I'm not going to wipe anything off of it. I'm going to leave it all just like it is. Make sure it's all smoothed out good. Because I want you guys to see this. This is what stain can and will do. I think that you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, before we go too far, I'll put the lid back on this. We'll set that over to the side. And a lot of y'all start probably going, oh, Danny, you don't have any gloves on. Guys, you see these hands? These hands are like leather. I mean, I hardly have any feeling in my hands. Very much, very little stuff actually absorbs in my hands. Look at those colors. Look at that. Look at that. Look at the actual colors in that wood. Guys, there's purples and greens and blacks and whites and cream colors and look at that. Look at that backsplash. This is the vanity cover. For the bathroom, we have a white sink that will go in the middle of it to offset the dark wood. And guys, just like the white sink will offset the darkness that's there, the Lord in our life is the light. It's the white part of our life. It's the brightness in our life. Like this bright white sink we're going to sit in is to offset that darkness and help to overpower it some is the same way that Christ is in our life. Uh, the Lord moves into our life if we permit it, and He becomes the shining light in our life to offset much of the darkness that we have in our life and to help us to be able to overcome 
some of the darkness that's in our life. And that's what Porch Time, the message of Porch Time really is today, is about letting your light shine. Because guys, in the world that we live in today, it's very difficult to be what we call a Christian and not be ridiculed or not be uh, badgered in some form or other. It's hard because everything around us is just evil today. Uh, it doesn't matter what we do, it's all evil. And in order for us to overcome the evil, we have to let the light in our life, we have to let the Lord shine through in our life so that we can be a light for others and to be able to hide the darkness that's in our life because we're all human we all have the same intuitions none of us are any different than the other we all sin the bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of god there's none of us that are immune to it we we've all done it we're all going to keep doing it the Apostle Paul made this statement in Scripture. He said, I, I do things that I shouldn't do, and I, I, I don't do what I should do. You know, even, even the, Paul admitted that. That his flesh was weak. But when he's weak, or when we're weak, 90% of the time, that's when, uh, that's when, when the Lord is strong in our life. And... It seems like many times when we're up here way up on a mountaintop that that's when we forget about God. And we have to go off the mountaintop and end up in the valley. Because you know when you're in a valley, the only way to look is up. You know? And the thing about being on a mountaintop is you can always go down. But when you're in a valley, you can only go up or you can stay in the valley. And that's the reason the psalmist says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, have you ever wondered why he said, Your rod and your staff comforts me? You know, he was a shepherd. The rod and the staff of a shepherd was to protect the sheep. Now, it, was, it, it had a blunt end on it that was also made for uh, protecting against wolves and stuff like that. But it also had a crook on it. He could reach out grab a sheep around the head, around the neck, and he could pull him back to safety. If he was to fall in the water, he could reach and grab him around the neck, and he could pull him up out of the water and pull him back to safety. And, and that's the way God is. He said, the psalmist said, Your rod, Lord, and your staff, they comfort me. Because he knows they're there. He knows they're there to protect him and to pull him away from danger if it should happen. And that's the way it is, guys, in our lives. We... So many times, we don't see the danger ahead of us because lots of times as humans, we only see the good in things. We don't really see the intent or the bad in things because there's evil people out there everywhere and they only intend to do us harm. And many times, I was reading Psalms 91, the Lord says, you know, he's, he gives his angels charge over us. And the Lord says, you know, lest at any moment you dash your foot against a stone, they're there to deliver you up. And that's, that's what it's all about. Not only is it that we should be there for the, the Lord's there to deliver us up, we should be there to deliver each other up. Like y'all watched, if you watched one of our previous videos about us helping Paul and Amanda clearing up some of their trees over there for their next big project. You know, we're helping them. They helped us with firewood. Uh, Amanda made a grocery haul. Her and Wanda did a video over on Crazy Days. If you haven't checked out Wanda's channel, you should go check it out because Wanda does a lot of things over there in the kitchen. She does lots of cooking. She does canning, dehydrating. Uh, there's so many videos that Wanda does over there on Crazy Days that we don't even we don't even put them over here on Deep South Homestead. We don't put a lot of the canning videos and stuff like that on Deep South, even though we have some of them over here. We don't put all of them over here. Wanda does a lot of specialty stuff over there. And that's why her channel is so important. Because she shows things that we don't necessarily show here at Deep South Homestead. And it, it, it gives us a break from, from just being here and doing Deep South Homestead. Because Deep South Homestead is about living a sustainable lifestyle. 
and teaching people how to garden, teaching people how to do things, teaching people how to survive, where Wanda can take on her channel and, and she can show people how to prepare meals and how to prepare food and things like that and she can go in a totally different direction over there and, and she can bless people over there in a different way than we do here at Deep South Homestead. And that's one reason a lot of people have asked me why do I not do All God's Children without anymore. It's because I left the videos over there. I leave All God's Children over there because a lot of people get a lot of, uh, a lot of good out of the messages that I've done over there. But I've learned that through the algorithm of YouTube that I can reach more people by inserting things into my porch times and stuff like that than I ever did over there. And for me, it's about reaching the people. It's not necessarily about preaching an entire message or anything like that or having the Bible open in front of me. I like to be able to take things like this countertop here today and talking about staining it and changing it and making it dark and uh, stuff like that and, and, and being able to relate it to our life uh, as a Christian and how that we have stained things come in our life and it stains us and we're, we're, we're darkened forever. And we can use a, like the, we use the white sink to offset the darkness of the stain. In our life, we can use the brightness of the Lord to offset the, the things in our life that are not so pleasant many times. So that's, uh, that's kind of the way I look at life. You know, I like to be able to use analogies. I like to be able to use um, things like that to be able to show the Lord's will and His way and to be able to tie it in with natural things in life rather than just sitting and uh, talking from behind a pulpit or from behind a Bible. I think I can reach more people if I do it the way that I'm doing it here and show them that it's not a bad life to live this life. It is, very, it is a very rewarding life. It's a very comforting life. It's a very satisfying life. It's a life that uh, that's very scripturally fulfilling because the Lord says, come out from among her, my people, and be ye separate. When you live this kind of lifestyle, you can come out from among her and you can be separate in a lot of ways. And that is very, uh, that's a very good thing to be able to do that. So, guys, I got to get back busy here. I wanted to take y'all out here today on porch time while I was doing this. It was windy outside and a lot of noise going on. Um, the weather is not very conducive to doing videoing outside today. Uh, couldn't very well take you into the garden. I thought about going in the greenhouse, but uh, the wind is whipping in the greenhouse and the plastics are popping on it a little bit. So, I figured coming in the shop doing this would probably be the best alternative. So, guys, I hope you have a blessed day, and I hope that you have a well and a safe life. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.